In this video, we're going to solve a circuit and we're going to decide whether we want to use mesh current or node voltage here. Let's go ahead and analyze if I want to do mesh current. I see one, two, three, four different mesh loops that I have to deal with here. That gives me four mesh current variables. There's also a dependent source here, so that gives me a fifth variable. So it would involve five equations and five unknowns. So mesh here, we're looking at a five by five system. Uh, on the other hand, it wouldn't be that hard to actually set up. There's no super loops or anything like that. Now let's go ahead and take a look here at what would if I happen if I wanted to use node voltage. So how many nodes do I have? I've got one, two, three, four. It looks like there's four nodes there. Uh, not to mention, oh, well, I guess five nodes, if you want to count that as a separate one there. And if I go ahead and use it that way as five nodes, well, then I could have ground here. I would immediately know this one's 24 volts because it's connected to that. And that would leave me with three variables there. So it'd have, sorry, three by three, but then there is of course the dependent source. So that really makes it a four by four system. I will say you could definitely argue it's really three by three because this node voltage here would be the same as V naught. So our dependent variable is actually the same as one of our node variables, which means we don't actually need a separate equation. So it's really three by three, but I'll leave it as four by four there. However, on the other hand, we do have a voltage source between these two nodes here. So you would need a super node. So there's pros and cons to using each of these systems. They both will work. There's nothing wrong with either one of them. It just kind of depends on how much work you want to do and your personal preferences. Some students prefer to always use node voltage or to always use mesh current, and that's fine, but it's definitely superior to understand both methods so that you can adapt when the problem happens to be significantly easier in one way. Personally, I think, especially noticing that this is a node voltage, I think the node voltage method giving you a three by three system is best. So I'll go ahead and stick with that here. So if I go ahead and write my first node voltage equation, and I'll call this V1 here, I'll call the middle one V2 and the right V3. So V1 minus 24 over four, plus going downwards here, V1 minus zero over two, going up V1 minus V3 over one, and going right V1 minus V2 over two equal to zero. Then if I do the uh, V2, V3 super node here, I look at the currents leaving it, there are four there. I would have V2 minus V1 over two, and then V3 minus V1 over one, and then down V3 minus zero over eight, and right V3 minus zero over four equal to zero. Then I would have the relationship between V3 and V2. V3 is V2 plus the voltage gain of three V naught. And we already made an argument there that V naught is the same as V3. So that means V3 is V2 plus three V3, or V2 is negative two V3 there. So I can go ahead and plug that in here, but let me just get rid of the fractions first. Multiply this by four, multiply this by eight. So four would be V1 minus 24 plus two V1 plus four V1 minus four V3 plus 
2v1 minus 2v2 is 0. And let me write that out more clearly. So multiply by 4, I get v1 minus 24 plus 2v1 plus 4v1 minus 4v3 plus 2v1 minus 2v2 is 0. Combining those together, v1, 2v1, 7, 9v1 minus 2v2 minus 4v3 is 24. Second one, when I multiply by 8 there, I would have 4v2 minus 4v1 plus 8v3 minus 8v1 plus v3 plus 2v3 is 0. Uh, let me just kind of identify. Here's my one equation. Here's a second equation. And combining for this third one here, minus 4 minus 8 is minus 12v1, 4v2, 8, 9, 11v3 is 0. I'll go ahead and first replace down what v2 is. v2 is negative 2v3. And then negative 12v1. Let's realize this is 9v1 here. Uh, minus 12v1 plus 4 times negative 2v3 plus 11v3 is 0. And this simplifies down to 9v1 plus 4 minus 4. Looks like that actually cancels out there. It's 24. And then the second one is going to be a negative 12v1 minus 8 plus 11. So we plus 3v3 is 0. So V1 is going to be 24 over 9, which is the same as 8 thirds volts. Plugging that into the second one here, negative 12 times 8 thirds plus 3 V3 is 0. Uh, negative 12 times 8 thirds is negative 32. Add that over. We're going to get 32 over 3 here for V3. And then we can find out what V2 is, is negative 2 times V3 is negative 64 thirds volts. Of course, now we need to look back at the original problem. They wanted I1, I2, and I3. So we use Ohm's law here. I1 is V1 minus 0 over 2. That would be... 8 thirds minus 0 over 2 is 4 thirds amps. I2 is V3 minus 0 over 8. So that's going to be 32 thirds minus 0 over 8 is 4 thirds amps. And I3 is V3 minus 0 over 4. 32 thirds minus 0 over 4 is 8 thirds amps. And that has solved for the currents that we were looking for.